Hi, it's David at Arthur David Smith. So, thought to keep the fish theme going, but to hark back to one of the things what I've done in the past, uh, we're going to do a tattoo koi uh, today. So, when I'm constructing my koi, and forgive the uh, back of the picture, what you might see here, this is uh, going to be the next video, so keep an eye out for that. That's going to we're going to be drawing like I did with the red snapper. But I'm going to be doing a uh, perch, European perch. So uh, you'll see that coming soon. So anyway, back to the tattoo koi. So we've kind of got this loose curve. Now, depending on where you're putting this on the body, obviously you adapt the curve to where you're wanting the tattoo to go. So imagine the centre of your fish running through, and this is going to be the approximate length Obviously, then we're going to put the tail on the end of it and things. So anyway, this will give us our basic construction. So what we've got to do is kind of roughly start filling in the shape of how our traditional koi Is going to roughly be so if you've looked at these traditional uh, koi tattoos in the past obviously if you as you get to like the shoulders of the fish it's going to thicken up and then taper off towards the tail so you need to make sure you get that into your drawing So we're going to rough that in first, very quickly, try and give our fish a bit of size and presence on the page. So, next step, so we've got the front of the jaw. And the lip area. Now with koi and carp in general they have the little barbly type things coming from the mouth that we use to find food on the bottom of the river uh, lakes whatever so i'm going to use these move the head from side to side and there's the bump into food and now they can uh, eat it then so okay like that now up here remember this is going through the center of the fish not the center over the top so We're to take the central line along the top of the fish now. It's going to actually look more like that. So I'm going to take that out to stop confusion now. So this line now I've drawn in is actually be the top of the fish if we centered it. So from there we can then it's not quite halfway. If you go halfway along the fish, you'll be back here. So maybe just past half it. Head will finish somewhere around here. We start the dorsal fin. So the dorsal fin, so it's going to start with this strongest part of the fin. It's always the thicker one. And then using this central line, we can take our dorsal around and often what we'll do with these type of things is we'll start bringing it back around on itself so the whole thing with these tattoos is it's not just the fish but it's the motion of the fish uh, and you can really use this effect if you put it onto the back of the arm say following the tricep it sits really nice 
onto the arm then. So what we're going to do now is actually the head. rough that in as well when you've got this central line as well you can obviously make it use that to get your symmetry <clears throat> when you're matching things over so from there then now we've got roughly where the mouth is going to go the gill plates We can then start to put in pectoral fins. And again, I'm drawing this a lot darker than I normally would. So it comes, it's picked up on the camera. I wouldn't advise you drawing it quite as uh, dark on yours and then you can obviously rub out your working lines when you finish and you start wanting to ink the piece in or paint the piece whatever you're doing with it so you just uh, obviously going to clean that up. Let me just hit pause a moment while I uh, shut some doors. I don't want to picking up on what's going on. Yep, sorry about that. Uh, I'm still, uh, my wife is still working from home because of the regulations and stuff being what they are at the moment still. So uh, she's having many business meetings so I don't want you picking up on that. Right, so back up onto this dorsal fin, so now we know roughly where it's going to be, we're going to segment it into the fin itself, we're going to follow that round. We've already kind of done that here, so this part on the fin, it's kind of like the our shoulder, how it works, this what kind of steers the fish around so they can move it in all sorts of ways so it's got this kind of ball joint and again the front of the fin tends to have this stronger part uh, as does the dorsal so now we're going to try and mark on where approximately our eye is going to go so kind of what I've been doing here is the eye sits within the socket, obviously. It tends to be a bit bulbous when you see the sides of fish. So what you're trying to do now is bring this over to this side as well. So kind of hopefully correspond with this. Have the oval. And then because it is bulbous we need to show that in our drawing as well so we're gonna have a bit of a highlight there as well bit of a lower light which will go on underneath we'll probably just have to rub a little bit of that out when we start to clean it up Kids have been abusing my razors recently, so they don't seem to be uh, wanting to uh, rub out as good as they used to. Joys of working at home with children who like to draw. Right, so I've got the eye socket into there now. We're kind of just building up this. I suppose it's like the plates of the skull. Uh, if you look at a fish, carp in particular, and I got these it's a bit of like armor I suppose kind of overlapping these shapes 
It all adds to the character of the fish. It all comes across really good when you start obviously putting it into a tattoo, putting that on your ticket client. So now we're kind of getting there now with all our features. We can actually start darkening those, some of those lines, altering them if necessary, cleaning the whole thing up. So as we move out to the tail, hopefully we've still got this in picture, I'll get to the end. Again, we're going to follow this central line Take it up a little bit. And rather than try and explain it, if I just draw it, you see what I'm doing here. So often you'll have to just kind of play around with this tail part. So what I've got here at the end of the fish is a little bit of conflict now with the how the tail would be and the back of the fish. So rather than keep trying to mess around with the tail, I'm actually streamlining the back of the fish to take the shape of the tail. Uh, by doing that, just gives for a far more natural uh, finish to the tail then. Because otherwise this would have been far too thick, far too bulky, the tail wasn't going to go into it correctly. So with things like this, it's often a little bit of trial and error to try and get that to work. Uh, so don't be afraid about correcting some of your drawing along and this is kind of why we do this sketchy approach to initially we don't want to be too precious with it if the scale ends up being too uh if it's too fat too long we can then correct it if we start down here doing a ridiculous amount of detail and then find out we've made an error it's really more disheartening because you've got to throw away this finished piece but by Obviously constructing this initially, being very sketchy with it, get it in, get the drawing something like very quickly. You get a feel for whether the scale is okay. And if you do need to alter something on the fly, you can do it without being too precious about it. Now, <clears throat> obviously the back of the tail fin is kind of would run naturally into that central line along the top of the fish, all the way down to its nose. So as long as we've got that now marrying up, then we know we're there or thereabouts in regards to the whole construction. Now we're just going to take these lines of the fin down, fan them out as the tail would be. And then finally, before we hit the scales, we've just got this fin. I'm sure somebody will uh, let me know the name. The name's eluding me at the moment. It's not the, I don't think it's the anal fin. It's one next to that, but either way, there will be one down there. So you just need to get that in. <clears throat> we're now getting the whole balance of the fish so if we were making this as part of a larger tattoo or a picture or something like that we could then if we wanted we could start introducing I don't know things like lily pads and stuff like that often these fish are if you see them in reality, and I, I keep crying myself, they're often swimming around on the top searching for food. They're quite hungry uh, beasties, these things. So they're always on the beg for f uh, food. So they'll always be up in and amongst the, uh, the plant life and stuff like that, searching. Uh, 
So you could do things like that at this point. Now, what I'm going to do as well, start to put the fins in. Now, Alex, the chap who does the tattoos at our shop, the owner of the, the shop, is always telling me off for doing too many scales. Now, whereas in reality, these scales would be quite tiny. What we tend to do is when we're tattooing, we make them a little bit larger. You can imagine putting hundreds of scales in with a uh, a tattoo machine is an absolute labour of love, pain, whatever you want to refer to it as. So if you do the scales too small, and with these more traditional tattooed koi anyway it's <clears throat> it's not real it's not a realistic picture it's not like the red snapper watch i did the other day when the scales are all correctly sized this is a embellishment on the truth so what we're going to start what we're trying to do here is if you noted what i'm doing i'm taking this central line of scales up first and working that across and then from the center of that so once we can get our full bed of scales all the way across we can then start filling things out a lot quicker so from the center of this one where this touches I'm going to take that over And slowly but surely we'll work our way back so from this one here this will curve over to the center of this one center of this to the center of this and so on and so forth so again just making sure these central ones follow that center line which we put in earlier as long as we get those ones right the rest of it will all start looking correct and what I might do is just alter this fin again and again because we're just putting it in sketchy initially we've got the ability to do that I'm not too precious over the sketch at this point because We've not really put in any heavy detail and we can change things quite easily. So again, we're pulling those over center to center. over and as long as we continue this around so as we start coming round we're going to keep changing ever so slightly the orientation so as we go further along As long as you get that orientation right as you go along it will look correct as we start to go around so i think what i'll do is i will stop that there i'll speed up the section where i just put in all the scales and then come back to it So we're back now after 
speeding up putting the scales in so if you obviously just watch through that you can see as I start getting to this point I started reducing the size of these ones and slowly expanding the size of these just like the, the fish it would happen in real life the scales slide underneath each other to allow the fish to bend uh, in the water so it'll kind of move underneath each other to allow that action so you're kind of doing the same and that accentuates the flow then of the fish as well so we've now got our virtually complete koi albeit all very sketchy uh, and rough at this stage so what i can do is i can start fitting these lines up For our final piece make sure we're all happy with the flow and everything else and again if you're drawing under normal circumstances have a piece of paper there because you're just going to keep rubbing this and smudging all your sheet but then you can keep you can go back into all this and kind of thicken these lines up to a point what you're happy with. Obviously, with it being a tattoo, you're going to tend to accentuate the outer lines with thinner lines on the inside, the detail lines. So, what I'll do is I'll just put a bit more detail around the eye so it's nice and clear. Show you what I was referring to. So, with the eye detail, what I tend to do is I'll have this highlight at the top. But we're also going to have a low light at the base of the eye. Gives it more of that realistic feel. But also it's, if you study eyes, it's how they tend to pick up light and shade and things like that anyway. So it's all about presenting the best possible outcome you can so look at things study them you'll see that's how these things are formed anyway so just rambling a bit now as i finish up but what you can see now that's a very scrappy blocking in now of this but what I would now do is take this to the light box or take it to the window and again like we've done in the past we're going to take a tracing off of this which is what we would do our cleaned up inked version uh, what we would then present to the client but <clears throat> taking it right back from that initial loose sketch of the how we wanted the fish to flow we then constructed the size of the fish, obviously thicker at the front, streamlining to the tail, and then slowly built in, very sketchy at first, where the fins needed to go, the dorsal, the tail, eye positions and things like that. Uh, so quite quickly, we were able to construct the koi and take it from there, but have a play with it. Uh, like with all these videos, don't be precious over it. It's just a bit of paper at the end of the day. Have a go. Try different. Uh, now you know where everything's going. You can put the fish into different orientations. But experiment with this and have a go and enjoy it. Uh, maybe uh, even post up some of your results uh, like some of the other people have done with some of the other videos. Uh, sent me pictures of stuff that they've produced. So... All the best with it. Uh, I'll catch you on the next video, which is obviously going to be uh, the coloured in perch like we did with the red snapper. So it's going to be a time lapse video. But uh, just
just thought I'd do this one in between. I'll clean this up so that you've got a nice finished version what we can have a look at and we'll take it from there but all the best and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers!